I should have known that something was off the moment I heard about the deal. In a time when used cars are going way above their market value, this one was practically a steal. Granted, it was through a friend of mine saying that they had to move and were willing to give it away for cheap, and I was desperate to get my hands on a cheap car, so I guess I can't be blamed too harshly for that. The car by itself was old, and it was while I was cleaning out the back seat that I saw it. There was an unmarked cassette tape wedged in the crevice between the seats. It would have been easy enough to miss from another angle, but I think I ended up dislodging it while shaking the back seat, making it visible in the first place. I withdrew it and saw that it was relatively undamaged, quite surprising given how long it must have been in there. My friend wasn't really into cassette tapes, as you can imagine, so it must have been the guy who owned it before him. My friend told me that it had been owned by two people before him. Thankfully, the car still started up when I put in the keys and ran with no real problems. While I was taking it for a short ride, my attention went to the cassette. It was unmarked. So what had been recorded on it? Curious, I inserted it into the player and pressed play. I had expected some old 90s song to start playing, but what started instead was a male voice. Hello there. Don't know who you are who's listening to this, but I hope you're doing well. My name is Charles, and I uh, hope you're having a nice day today. There was the occasional sound of honking in the wind while the man was speaking, so he was probably recording while driving. The headlights flickered as the voice filled my ears, but I chalked it up to the car being old. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to talk for long. This is, uh, kind of a journal of sorts, I guess. I don't really know where to start with this, so I think I'll just cut to the chase. I'm dying. <laughs> I have advanced blood cancer, and I don't have much time left. My blood nearly froze. This was far more morbid than what I was expecting. So, yeah, uh, these are my final thoughts or something, I guess. Don't really have any close friends or family, so I guess you'll be the one sharing this last moment with me. I, uh, think that's enough for today. I'll tune back in later. There was a pause, and I began to panic. Though it had just been a short time, I was hooked and wanted to hear more. My first reaction, of course, was that it might have been some sort of prank. Except I knew my friend very well. This wasn't the kind of joke he'd pull, and there was something about the tone of this person's voice that I could hear even over the cassette that told me his grief was real. I just hoped that that wasn't all that there was on the tape. Ah, right, I guess I forgot to mention this last time. Today is December 3rd, 2004. I mean, you have to do that in a journal, right? Well, anyway, I should clear things up here. This isn't some sort of memoir or anything where I'm going to talk about my feelings or whatever. See, I might sound crazy, and may maybe I am, but there is a way that I might be able to live. Granted, every single doctor I've been to has said otherwise, but there is some other solution. It isn't something crazy like healing crystals or whatever, but I think that there are risks in dabbling with this method, so if anything happens to me, and it might, I don't really have anyone with me who would really care. But I would want people to know what happened to me, so <clears throat> just so that they don't make the same mistake I did, assuming I made a mistake at all. Sorry if I sound a bit confused, I'm having trouble composing my thoughts a little. I began driving towards a road going through the nearby woods where there were no other cars in sight, which made me kind of nervous if this pile of junk decided to break down, but... This road did get some traffic, so I was sure that I would be able to get help at some point or the other. It started with my aunt. Um, she was a witch, or at least she claimed to be. She would keep three black cats and was into voodoo and whatnot. I always thought it was strange, but she was otherwise nice. She passed away two years ago and left most of her stuff with me. One of them was... Okay, I have a hard time saying this out loud, but but it was a book of spells. <gasps> Crazy, I know. But I'm desperate enough to try something, anything, that might save me. There is this one ritual mentioned in here, and I think I'll take a go for it. Need time to get the ingredients, though. So I'll be back later, I guess. It was then that something weird happened. The accelerator seemed to be working on its own as my speed began to touch 80. 
I stepped on the brake slowly but found that it wasn't working. I began to panic. All right, today is December 17th, 2004. Don't have much time yet. Uh, now that I'm actually sitting here ready to do this, I honestly think I'm going crazy. Person who's hearing this. I'm honestly concerned that maybe the cancer spread to my brain or something, though my latest scan shows there's nothing abnormal there. I can't cure my cancer per se, but there is a chance to stay on. The soul is eternal, but the body is temporary. At least that's what it says. The car begins speeding up even more as strange sounds come from the cassette. It sounds like chanting, but it isn't in any language that I understand. I slam the brakes to no avail. The chanting goes on even faster until at last the guy shouts a large word at the end, and finally the car begins to slow down on its own. My heart's pounding like crazy at the time. Though nothing had happened to me, yet the image of me crashing into something kept playing in my head. As the car began to slow down even more, I make my decision, and the steering wheel suddenly jerked from my hands as if it had a mind of its own. The car stopped completely, and my seatbelt ejected itself. A voice from the cassette player screamed, Get out! I didn't need to be told twice. I got out as the car sped away, with no one in the driver's seat. I called my friend, and he said that the only issue he'd ever encountered was that it would sometimes misbehave occasionally. He didn't know anything about the cassette. I have my own theory on what happened, though, now. Charles had somehow transferred his soul or consciousness, whatever, into the car. Its headlights were his eyes, the, the wheels were his limbs, and so on. I can only guess that while doing that weird ritual, he also put a part of himself in that cassette by mistake. And so me putting it into the player completed him in some way as he was joined up with the rest of himself. I learned my lesson, though. I carpooled for as long as possible, always offering money for gas, of course, and bought a new car later on. There was no way I was going to repeat that same mistake. Till this day, though, there are occasional stories around my hometown of a phantom car with no driver which people encounter. It's become its own sort of urban legend. Of course, I know what it is. Just Charles roaming around, finally free of his cancer. Hello everyone, I'm Giggles, and thank you so much for listening to my narration. A quick shout out to all my patrons, Melissa Perez, Geek Sanctuary, Lawrence Wallen, Andrea Sanderson London, Eric Safuentes, Krzysztof Kozak Slazak, Jesse Hartley, and Icy Narrates. If you want to become a patron today, you can check out the link in my description below. And as always, thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next video.